with me today is Professor Peter Hill. Perhaps one of the biggest questions that we're we'll always asked is, tell us about medication. People talk about medication, but how does it really work and what does it do? Is that the right thing for ADHD? We have with us Professor Peter Hill, who's going to answer some of our questions. Thank you, Mel. The point about ADHD, from my perspective, is that the diagnosis is made on the basis of observation. It's what people see professionally about another person's functioning in terms of their ability to concentrate, ability to uh, restrain impulses, the level of their restless activity, and underneath that pattern that one observes is a brain that isn't functioning quite as well as it should. Right. And the brain is likely to be perfectly intelligent, but there are bits of it that just aren't doing what its owner wants them to do. Yep, that makes sense. So in particular, at the front of the brain, the, the part of the brain that really is literally above your eyes, that is the part that restrains impulses, stops you doing daft things suddenly. It's the part of the brain that enables you to focus your concentration on something. It's the part of the brain that can hold in mind what has just happened and reorganize it or consider it. And yet that part of the brain links with the other parts of the brain more in the middle, which are to do with the regulation of activity, of movement and so forth. Okay. That's, that's really interesting. So really what we're saying is that ADHD is really about the, the, the processes of the brain and the fact that when you have a diagnosis of ADHD, actually it's the brain itself which needs some support in order to, in order to help it concentrate. Without doubt. I mean, it's fundamentally, ADHD is something to do with brain functioning and to a certain extent with brain growth, right. where those factors just have not been good enough to support that person, the brain's owner's activities. So I would split off the ADHD from and what it is, what it means in terms of brain functioning from the person, the personality, and their life. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. But, so how do the medications actually help? Why, why does a medication, or in what way does a medication support the brain? The standard medications that are likely to be used first when somebody gets a diagnosis of ADHD will increase the amount of neurotransmitters in the front of the brain. Now, a neurotransmitter is a chemical which enables nerve cells to talk to each other. That's how they do it. They pass nerve impulses from one to another by releasing chemicals known as neurotransmitters. And what the medicines do is increase the availability, the amount of those neurotransmitters so that the nerves in the front of the brain work better. Okay. okay, well that's a really clear and helpful explanation. And do all children always have the same doses or do they, how, how do they work out what's the best medication for a child or, or what dose that they should have? Well, most children are going to start with a basic medication uh, which is known scientifically as methylphenidate, though it comes in various brands which are all slightly different from one another. The dose of methylphenidate is not fixed, or by and large, People tend to start out with small doses like 5 milligrams or 10 milligrams, uh, perhaps in a single dose, to test an effect. But you have to think about the child, if it's a child, and what situation they're in, what age they are, to a certain extent what size they are, and find out stepwise by exploring, by titrating, that means adjusting the dose, what dose of medication is going to work for this child in terms of what they want to do and what other people around them, like teachers and parents, want them to do. So there's no standard dose. No. And it's arrived at by a process of exploration. Okay. Well, that's a really helpful point. So actually what you're looking for is when are you achieving the success that you're aiming for in terms of the child's behaviour or understanding or learning. And that's really the, the medical aim of, of, of taking the, the, um, the medication itself. Yes, I, I think there's a trap for doctors because these medicines usually work. So it's very easy for a doctor to say, this is ADHD. And sometimes the business of diagnosing ADHD is relatively straightforward if you're just looking for ADHD. But you could, should, of course, be looking at all the other things which tend to go alongside ADHD. But if you've got ADHD and you start to treat it with one of these medicines, particularly methylphenidate, um, it will probably work. And everyone will say, great. And everyone will be very pleased. But I think a better practice is to say, if this medicine works, what do we want it to do? Exactly what do we want to achieve? 
and can we measure that? And therefore, can we have a target, whether that is improved academic achievement or not having fights with siblings in the evening, or what, <laughs> being able to take the child around the supermarket, you know, these sorts of things. If you've got a specific aim to go for, then you can find the dose that works for that child and that family. And I think that's better than just saying things are better. Yes, absolutely. Actually, that, that it's, it's quite interesting for parents to hear that it's not just about a blanket dose for a blanket improvement or a blanket uh, effect, that actually it can be that you can look at particular areas that actually help. So is that, can you have too much medication? Or what about the side effects? It's two questions, really. The, with any medication, there are going to be side effects. That is inevitably the case. Um, the body is so complicated that if you adjust or interfere with part of its functioning, it almost certainly have results somewhere else. But there are two sorts of side effects. One which is to do with dose. If you take methylphenidate, if you give somebody too much, they will become too quiet. They will become unresponsive. They may just do the same thing over and over again. We certainly don't want that. It's very easy to spot parents instinctively know this is not right. We hear about the zombie look. That would be the zombie look, <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And you need two sources of information um, with little children and three sources of information with teenagers. You need to know what the parents observe, what the teachers say, and what the child or the teenager in particular says themselves, because they won't like that state of mind. Okay. So nobody will like that state of mind, but that's related to dose. Okay. Uh, and I think the important thing to remember about side effects is that there are main effects. Main effects of medication for ADHD is that it works. There are some other effects that are not so welcome. Usually, somebody taking methylphenidate won't eat lunch. It's an appetite suppressant, and that can be a real nuisance, and you have to think about other ways uh, of getting food in to uh, the system, either in the evening or um, high-energy milkshakes at lunchtime. If you take methylphenidate too late in the day, or if you've got an extended release preparation that uh, lasts until the evening, then it's quite likely that will make it jolly difficult to get off to sleep. And the usual remedy for that is, apart from just getting things sensibly organised, no screens in the hour before bedtime, for example, uh, is to think about using melatonin, which is a pretty innocuous way of boosting the brain's normal way of putting itself to sleep. Okay. I think most of the other side effects are actually very rare and unlikely to happen. And I wouldn't be very concerned about those, so they should always raise them with the prescribing nurse or doctor. Okay, thank you. I understand. And can you, can you stay on medication forever? Is it something that people say, oh, maybe only one or two years, but then I'm not going to go back on it because it's bound to be doing me some harm? I mean, is that, is that accurate? Is there any truth in that? Or can you really, is, does the evidence show that you can keep on taking the medication? The evidence shows that you should keep on taking the medication, basically. Um, it, it certainly won't do any harm. Okay. I mean, in fact, as far as stuff like methylphenidate or dexamphetamine, almost certainly, um, if you take it over time, that actually helps your brain to grow in a way that it hasn't grown if you've got ADHD. ADHD is essentially a, a product of slow growth and development. You can see that. You can actually measure it in research studies, not in real life clinical practice. And if you continue with medication, that actually helps that layer of cells in the front of the brain to grow. That can, you can show that in a research study, no problem. That's really interesting. So actually what you're saying is that by staying on the medication and by taking it consistently, it can actually improve brain growth in the areas where there's been a slowing down or a deficiency in, in brain matter in when you've got a diagnosis of ADHD. That is what a couple of studies have shown. Okay. Um, but I think that's important. Uh, taking it consistently, of course, depends on what the pattern of taking it will be, because that will differ from one person to another. If you have a young person who is underachieving and failing academically at school because of their poor concentration or their poor short-term working memory, then you're going to want to increase their functioning at school. And it probably doesn't matter whether they take it at weekends or holidays unless they've got massive amounts of homework and revision. So there you would just be targeting school days okay. and you can do that. 
it sounds very flexible actually, probably more so than people think. And really what about missing doses or a lot of young adolescents perhaps might not be so organised and miss doses or perhaps mix it with alcohol or other sub substances. What happens in those circumstances? Is there is there sort of a golden rule if you miss a dose what you should do or should you or shouldn't you take it with other substances? I meet very, very few people who take their medicine for any reason regularly. Everyone forgets to take medicines. It's very helpful because with something like uh, methylphenidate, if you don't take it, you see the results immediately, <laughs> that <laughs> day. So missing doses is actually quite helpful. So I don't mind people missing doses. If you miss a dose, then it depends, I think, on the time of day. Let's say you normally give it to a child at half past seven and you suddenly think, it's 10 o'clock, the child's in school, should I run in and give him the dose? I think probably not, don't bother. Not on that day, it's not worth it. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about missing doses. You give the dose for the day in question. Methylphenidate leaves the body. It's metabolized and used up or it's excreted on the day that you give it. It only lasts for a few hours. So you don't have to build up the dose. For some other medications like Stratera, or in tune if, then you do have to do right. that sort of thing. But for the usual sort of ADHD medicine, it's just the day in question. Um, what was your feeling about um, staying on medication when young teenagers are likely to be trying other substances? I think, generally speaking, uh, it's good for them to be on medication because it, it restrains their impulsive behaviour and their temptation to do something really stupid. Uh, on the other hand, the real risk, I think, for teenagers and parties is the risk of novel psychoactive substances, legal highs, so-called, uh, because we don't know anything about those, and some of them are, frankly, so dangerous. I, I can't exaggerate. I have known deaths uh, of children on legal highs. And if you start mixing methylphenidate with legal highs, you don't know what you're doing, and it's very, very dangerous. Okay, so well, at a, a party where that's likely to happen, you don't take the medicine, even yes. though you hope it might restrain their impulsive behaviour. <laughs> okay, thank you. Actually, that makes a lot of sense, and it's very helpful to talk through some of those questions, which I know are burning questions for parents. Um, Peter, thank you so much for spending this time talking through some of those really critical issues. And parents, we hope that you found that short video helpful. Thank you.